I actually went to drama school. I was at the Royal Scottish Academy of Music and Drama, or the Royal Conservatory of Scotland, as it is now. And I mean, I think it sort of happened in third year when you you start getting agents and casting directors coming in to talk to you about you know what their role is and how the industry works. And I remember thinking well, that sounds quite interesting. I'd be quite up for that. And I I talked to some tutors and friends and things and said, you know, I'd, I would, maybe I'd quite like to give that a go. And then after I graduated, I did a few bits of acting work, which are best left unmentioned. Um, and then I started looking for assistant positions. And it just so happened, I was out for dinner with a good friend of mine who's an actress and her agent was there. And he had to go away the, the next week to America and his business partner was off sick. And he threw me in at the deep end and said, well, do you know what, come into the office. And he left the keys in a, in a kebab shop underneath the office and said, just turn up on Monday, it'll be fine, you know, just answer the phone, don't worry, I'll be on Messenger or something if anything goes wrong. And I sort of, you know, rocked up and <laughs> turned the computers on, the phone started ringing and then that was it. And I, I stopped doing it. And it was, it was absolutely terrifying, but I really enjoyed it. And then from that, he recommended me to a, another agent who, who he used to work for. And I got a job there and kind of spiralled from that. I mean, I, I, I think it must help. I think, you know, you know, all agents are different. We're all very different at Amanda Howard Associates and our backgrounds are all very different. Um, but I think I feel that having been to drama school and, and gone through that, it does give me an understanding of, of actors in, in a particular way. But again, I think we all put our different experiences and our backgrounds into the way we try and help actors. And, uh, but I, I like to think it does help in a way. And, you know, I appreciate having gone there and seen it for myself, so. It's pretty routine, really. I mean, it kind of, it, you're, you're very much operating on the fly. You know, you kind of, you can't really plan in advance what you're going to do. But, you know, there will always be, or hopefully, there'll always be breakdowns from casting directors. So you know, there's a process of going through those and suggesting the actors. There'll be auditions coming in, and so you'll be relaying those to the actors, inevitably changing the times for actors. And hopefully people will get jobs and so there's there's a process of kind of doing the deal for that negotiating the money which I think is what people see agents doing they're kind of screaming down the phone and kind of you know, banging on about wanting more and more and more money and <laughs> there's obviously a level of that but yeah and yeah we, we will read through the contracts and stuff for the the jobs that people have got and make sure they comply with the, the terms we've agreed and we go to theatre an awful lot we'll, we'll take cast directors to see our clients and shows um, and obviously going to showcases and things, uh, looking for new talent. But I mean, I would say that I think a lot of people think their agents spend all their time looking for new actors and we're always on the watch. But it does take up quite a small part of your day, sort of going through that, the submissions and stuff, because you have so much work to do with the actors you already represent and your, your sort of key responsibility is to look after those. It's an interesting one because I think agents and their the actors they represent, they do have to have a, 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 a sort of quite weird relationship in that there is, there's a very personal thing between them and there's a business side between them and that has to exist. You know, you need to feel comfortable with that person, you need to develop a, a sort of social relationship with them and quite often you will socialise with the actors you represent. But at the same time there is a business side to that and that demands a level of frankness that you know you have to have that you have to be able to have conversations about money and whether or not somebody's going to take that job whether or not someone should go up for something and so it is quite a strange relationship but you know you sort of get through it and it, and it works and you know i really like all the actors i represent and i think that's a sort of testament to how that relationship moves forward and when you add the casting directors into that as well you know it is a very small industry, we all know each other and we're often very friendly with them and so you can have uh, sort of quite frank uh, conversations with them as well and I think we really respect the role that they have in the industry, you know, they have to churn through these often hundreds and hundreds of suggestions for roles and it's our job obviously to try and get our actors seen for those roles and there's a balancing act that you know you can only learn with time you have an experience of being an agent and how that relationship kind of develops and works but i mean on the whole it's very friendly and it's good fun so you know of the sort of the three pronged thing it, it does it does figure itself out i think it's really difficult and i 
you know, I do slightly despair of the, the number of submissions we get from actors you know, looking for representation. And it, it can be a bit heartbreaking sometimes to see you know, people who, who were really, really going at it. And I, I know people who I went to drama school with who were really you know, ploughing on and on and on and on to try and make their careers work. And it's, it's difficult, but the only thing I feel like I can ever say to those people is, you know, if you really, really want it, then you have to keep trying because you never know what's going to happen. You never know who's going to be watching that fringe show you're in. And it's only by doing stuff that you will get noticed. And, you know, if, if someone wants me to come and see them in their show, then, you know, they have to keep trying at that. They have to kind of get into the show in the first place. And, you know, you do that through perseverance and being really, really proactive. And I think people recognise that quality a lot in the industry. I mean, Spotlight, I think, facilitates the way we do business nowadays. And I think Spotlight's done a really clever thing in the last, uh, however, 10, 15 years in kind of moving away from just being a directory of actors to providing this uh, sort of breakdown service. And, you know, that that is something we use every day. And it speeds things up immeasurably because, obviously, if a casting director can send a breakdown out, it can be on an agent's desk within seconds. We can suggest people on the link very, very, very quickly. And it kind of, it makes the industry work. It makes it tick along. And I think at the moment, you know, it feels like 99% of the breakdowns that come out are being sent over the Spotlight link. And it's, it's a really useful tool to have. And, you know, I think Spotlight should be very proud of it. Yeah, I mean, I think the industry does change. I mean, Without being too morose about it, I think that you know one of the things that particularly hit him when I started was this great recession that we're suffering under, and you know that did have a big impact on the sort of the way the industry gets on day by day. There isn't as much money around, and there is a real pressure on people to spend that money wisely. And I think that has been difficult to watch, and it's it's been quite upsetting to watch as well. So I think we're all hoping that that will end. In terms of kind of technological innovations. I think we've, you know, things like the Spotlight Link have made a huge difference to the kind of the day-by-day -day business. Just having the internet in general has sped things up. But, you know, I wasn't around for it, but I, you know, it makes, it makes me shudder when I think about the idea of sort of feeding CVs into fax machines and typing everything up on typewriters. It's, it's, it seems so horrible, but, you know, we're kind of really blessed with being able to send all that stuff off so easily. And even people putting themselves on tape, you know, there are, there are so many ways to do that now. And, anyone with an iPhone can re record themselves doing a few scenes and that can be up online for a casting director to watch again within minutes really. So that's all happened quite recently and I think it, it, it helps the industry a lot. It feels like there was a lot of resistance to you know changes to the link and stuff over the years. I think people probably resisted having email and things but you know the industry can't just sit back. It has to go with the flow and you know, as things change, I think it's good to see that we're sort of embracing them and using them. And it, and it is really useful. You know, there are, there are tools out there that we now use that five years ago we weren't that have really helped things. And they, you know, they, they mean you can spend more time doing what we feel like we should be doing, which is trying to find work for our actors rather than typing up CVs <laughs> and feeding things into fax machines and stuff. So, yeah. We'd all like to see improvements in technology that would help. I think, you know, anything that comes along, I don't, I, I'm not <laughs> particularly in favour of what they might be, but, you know, I think it'd, it'd be nice to see us embrace that. Um, generally about the industry, I mean, I think we'd all like to see improvements in the money and stuff. And I suppose to qualify that, uh, there needs to be a sort of a recognition again of, you know, the people who actually make this industry happen are those creative people. It's not, it's not the likes of me. It's not execs and stuff, it is the, the actors and the directors, the designers, and they make the industry happen. And I think it'd be nice to see the money trickle down to them again and a sort of a recognition for the role they play, possibly more so than it is being at the moment. I think there's always something very satisfying about whenever a graduate gets their first job. That's, that's a really nice feeling because obviously there is a balance as an agent between uh, the actors you represent and some of them are quite experienced and casting directors will know them and they'll be called in you know naturally people will come looking for them because they'll want them to do roles they'll want them to audition for something they'll want to offer them something and so you know with those the job is very much about negotiating that contract and getting them the best deal they can possibly get which is always very interesting 
But when people start out in their careers, no one knows who they are. And getting that person in the door and getting them seen by a casting director and that leading into a job is a really proud feeling. It's really nice. You, you, you do feel really, really chuffed when someone gets their first job. I've just had a graduate get their first job and it's at the RSC. And I think, you know, seeing how happy he was and him screaming down the phone does, does make you smile, definitely.